Oh no, I can't tell you their names. It would bring my children bad luck if I told you. Have you lost any children? Yes, that's the way it is with us. Only the strong can live. The moose's main crop is sorghum. It provides most of the carbohydrates in their diet. Their seemingly endless routine and constant chanting puts me in a hypnotic state. Time becomes irrelevant. After Nabali is done grinding the seeds into a fine flour, she adds milk or water and boils the sorghum mixture in a clay pot. Sometimes the mixture is allowed to ferment into a sorghum beer. The Musi complete their diet with beans, milk, honey and meat. I must admit, the sorghum porridge tastes pretty good with honey. After feeding her children, Nabale talks with Dutia. Yes, it hurt a lot when I pierced my lip. My father got 38 cows when I married Banyese. My husband likes it a lot. Yes, I think I'm beautiful. I wonder what Nabali would think of the kids in our so-called advanced society that wear nipple, belly button and eyebrow rings, poke studs through their tongues and wear tattoos on every conceivable part of their body. The Mursi's concept of beauty is so different from ours, yet just as valuable and worthy of respect. After a few days, I'm getting used to the lip disc myself. I'm beginning to understand why their men find it attractive. Nabali is very beautiful. Cultivation is the work of women and girls. Herding is for men and boys. Agnese, Nabali's husband, will tell you that he has 45 cows and two wives in that order, which means Bagnese is a wealthy man. Cattle is their currency. Not only does it provide milk, meat and leather for their clothing, it is also the only true measure of a man's wealth. A typical Mursi settlement consists of four or five families herding their cattle together. The Mursi will do anything to avoid slaughtering these animals. It is only done out of extreme necessity. But the cow's blood, well, that's a different story. It is prized as a source of great strength. To the Mursi, blood is the original renewable resource. For the Morsi warrior, there's nothing like a half gallon of hot blood first thing in the morning, and then wipe your mouth with dry cow dung. It's clean, absorbent, and available. Or not your own.
During the dry season, the Mursi leave their villages and drive their cattle closer to the Omo River. The Morsi have an aversion to body hair. It's considered unhealthy. Both men and women remove all their pubic hair. The only hair that is left adorns their head. <laughs> This is also one of the few remaining places in the world where people are totally unconcerned by their nakedness. Bagnese is applying a thin layer of clay to Urbudong's back. While it is still wet, he uses the tips of his fingers as a brush to create a variety of patterns. The Mursi view the human body as a living canvas. Their art is designed to seduce women. Bagnese believes that the paint on his face gives him supernatural protection. He wears it to frighten his opponent during the donga or his enemies during battle. Lamorsi have always been powerful warriors. One way to channel violence and settle disputes is the donga. Only unwed men compete in these duels to prove their manhood and courage to settle disputes over girls. To win, you just have to knock out your opponent. Your prize is often a girl chosen by the women. This is only a practice bout. The real duels will take place in the fall and become extremely bloody. It is strictly forbidden to kill your opponent. Should this happen, the killer is banished from the village for life. His land is... There is a widely accepted view that indigenous peoples should be protected from the outside world, their innocence preserved. But my experience of the Yanomami convinced me that they were entirely capable of making their own decisions. My self-appointed minder, Shamo Prusiwe, known to us as Tapia, was so curious to know where we came from that now, four years on, I'm returning to honor my promise and take him on a trip to England. Tapia's village is 600 miles from the nearest small town, and the closest I can get by plane is a remote Catholic mission station at Platanal. 